Thanks for staying with us now. Tassara's Day is your opportunity to reintroduce yourself to that best friend of writers, the Thassaras. Now, whether you're looking for a new word to spice up your vocabulary or looking for precisely the right nuance to add to a sentence or phrase, a Tassaras can be there to help you. Who is a heavy word person here? The only person that knows how to speak grammar is Hootsie. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, so the thing is, I, I really do admire people when I hear them speak and they're able to, because I love simplicity. I love to use just very plain, simple English. But really, when you hear people that are really good with um, the words and all of that, when you hear them speak, you just, get, you just cannot help but fall in love with them. Right? I mean, when you hear Obama, you hear, you know, Michelle, Michelle as well. She speaks, you know, I mean, if you listen to them, our very own Uti, you know, Uti, when she wants to put in that game of, you know, yeah. and she speaks, I mean, like, so I'm just in awe. Um, our teacher, Isi, <laughs> you know, Isi would use some kind of words. I just like, so, and for me, again, because I'm raising hmm, my children, I'm raising children, you know, so I'm not wondering, hmm. Too strong, boy. Yes, yeah, so two strong boys. And when they, when they are using some kind of word sometimes, I quietly, yes, I'm always in my phone. I just as they are talking, I'm using Google. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was my elder sister for me. She was the one, um, I think I learned how to read books from her growing up. But like you said, I'm also for simple words, just using the most simplest words to explain or express myself my elder sister she has a lot of words in her itinerary so when um, itinerary. So when she's when she's talking i'll be like hmm? <laughs> we went to the same school oh. we grew up under the same roof where did you learn this one i think it's a gift it's a gift right the the gift of the gap all right so um before we go on what we found in the news today is our md's birthday Day. Hey, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Mr. Lekon Ogunbao. He's 61 today, you know, handsome with his white beard. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, sir. We want to wish you all the best. Long life, prosperity, everything good that you wish for yourself. And of course, continue to be the great boss that you are and the fantastic partner with us on Ways as well. So all the best. We wish you all the best. See the smile. <laughs> All right, so what did we find in the news? Uh, let me start with you, Jennifer. So BBC investigation has discovered that political parties are secretly playing social media influencers to spread wrong information about other candidates. So basically, um, they had a conversation with some people who are in different political parties and... Um, they basically call them whistleblowers and they were telling them how um, sometimes they pay influencers and the people that they pay about 20 million naira just to spread false information. And they also spoke to a social media influencer who said that um, he doesn't or he or she they didn't give a particular gender. Yeah. So basically what they do is they don't use their personal account to tweet these things. They hire micro influencers. And if you don't know who micro influencers are, micro influencers are people who have followers between 1000 to 10,000 um, followers either on Instagram or on Twitter. And basically what they do is they go on Twitter. Sometimes the political parties or politicians give them the exact words that they need to tweet or they just give them an idea and then let them run with it. So they come up with their own words just to fine tune it, make it sweet and then tell lies about another candidate. So sometimes um, aside money, they say they give them gifts. Some influencers don't ask for gifts or money. They just want positions in the government you promise yeah, yeah. Mm. so it's 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 widespread it happens so that's why sometimes you see some information out there and two plus two is not equaling four at mm. that point mm. that that's that's one of the things that that happens and sometimes it's, or most times it's very rampant towards election period i was just going to say that you know funny thing is that these particular elections Nigerians are actually sniffing out those people. Mm. You know, it, it, there, there was a time when some people were kings on Twitter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now everybody's going at them. Yeah. Everybody's going at them because it seemed like, come, you, you don't hold any influence here right now anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, so because for me, I was just saying to you, to you, to you, I have over 35,000 followers on Instagram, on Twitter. I don't go there. 
because at some point i just became very detached to twitter because it was just too much negativity you just open your phone and you would know that these things are actually sponsored mm. i mean it's propaganda the truth is politics is a very very interesting game you need to understand that you know everything that can be used against you will be used against you yeah. so you too you have to be prepared you know so you can't just sit on your on uh, and just think everything will be fine no so if you also have those micro influencers right mm -hmm. those 1000 people that have 1000 followers 10000 followers this is the time you know to continue to counter and to continue to you know like reply respond do all of those things because those things are actually huge yeah. we our our elections especially the 2015 election it it brought the it brought to light the fact that a lot of us are actually influenced yeah. by some of these mind shapers because yeah. i'll call them mind shapers mm -hmm. yeah. right and the heavy influence that happened and the storytelling that happened around the character of president muhammad buhari yeah. being an anti-corruption uh, anti-corruption person being the person that would take us out of insecurity based on his military background yeah. all of those propagandas all of those things were filled heavily mm -hmm. you know it was it was really filled heavily on that twitter platform yeah. so a lot of people spread i mean they spread a lot of um stories about people either for you to like them or for you not to like you know so like there the are person, so many yeah. things that happens within that space so we have to really be careful yeah. to filter and like you rightly said some of these words they are very key words so that when you just punch it it pops up mm -hmm. you know so you have to also be careful even you that they're spreading things around you you must also find those influencers that would also help you know push your push, yeah. your, your your own agenda okay. yeah hey how about you fair enough um microsoft incorporation the owners of windows is letting go of 10,000 employees and it was said by U.S. Secretary Natella Satia. She said we will align our cost structure with our revenue and where we see customer demand. So basically, um, from the pandemic till now, the people, the way we use our digital um, devices has apparently reduced. And I guess this will be the millennials you know, who are, you know, taking time off their phones. And people are also saying that, you know, being online, the mental if impact on it, you know, you don't seem to get anything done. It's a bit distracting. So people are withdrawing now. And so they're cutting down on their employees. Your this is very sad, but I think everybody will be fine. I think despite their letting go of people, there's still large opportunities in the tech space to deal with. Mm -hmm. And this is like less than 5% of their total amount of employees. So, I mean, it's sad, but yeah, I think we'll be fine. Uh, this is welcome to our reality. Uh, in old. Nigeria, it's, it's not a new thing. Well, it's not a new thing in Nigeria. I was just going to even say that for me, I think, um, I mean, a friend of mine called me today. She has registered uh, with about 2000 as not small money, $2,000, you know, for a course online. She said, what? I have to upscale, I'll be upscale okay. rather. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I need to do something that while I'm home, I can get maybe two extra jobs right yeah. here in Nigeria and, you know, be earning money that ah, even if I earn maybe 2000 or $3,000 per month from those extras, you your know. Your expenses. You know, your exp yeah. So, I mean, yeah. she so she, she, she was saying that and I it made sense. So, for me, I'll just say to the people that are, you know, losing their jobs, try. Go and get um, skills, go and get all those things because it will really be helpful to you. So my story is actually linked to the federal government, you know, it decries rampant um, death among civil servants. So the head of the civil service of the federation, Fola Shade Yemi Esan, at the inauguration of the newly established um, Employee Wellness Center for civil servants said that many civil servants, all of a sudden, they were just dying. Right, you just hear that somebody just dropped dead, and these are related like work related diseases. Right, mm. I mean, she had complained that said that you know the most common um, complaints that you hear are people having neck pain, back pain, and this mm. is as a result Stress of related. sitting, you know, for long hours and all of that. So, that it was really imperative that they built that wellness center, and this is part of the promise for employee health you know um towards driving a healthy work environment for their employees i mean globally about 2.3 million 
um, people, both men and women, globally, succumb to work-related diseases or death, right, mm -hmm. or accidents, right? So it's not even something that is unique to Nigeria. If you break that down, it's about 6,000 people dying every single day yeah. from work-related diseases. So it was really important for the federal government to look into um, the, the story. She was saying that just um, um, within... Um, uh, let me try to see if I can get the stories. She said they came and met her that two top civil um, permanent secretaries, right, had died. You know, every you just wake up, you say the disease is, um, of course, it's preventable. And um, where civil servants do not know, of course, their blood level, she was also saying that it's very common. There's a, there's a part where she said the trend is necessitating greater attention to be paid to the health and safety of their workers and the civil servants around the country. Um, so, I mean, this is a good step for the federal government because um, anybody that understands these things, you would know. Okay, so she was saying in the last six months that she had received messages from the civil servants and permanent secretary, not less than 10 permanent secretaries who complained to be, um, to me, on preventable diseases. So mm. every day she's getting the reports and all of that. And that was what necessitated this um, wellness center to be built. So hopefully it would be good to also have those wellness centers across all 36 states yeah. Yeah. of the federation because it's not just, I mean, every technically right every work environment should have maybe a, a mini gym whatever it is that you can have just for your employees to be able to stretch their legs and do some form of physical exercise and i mean the reason i took this story is because of what we're discussing today okay. hopefully when our guest comes on on air she'll be able to also explain how um, companies can begin to look into you know wellness of their staff through exercises, yeah. right? I hope so. All right, so we'll take a break now. When we come back from that break, we'll have our guests join us as we discuss um, wellness and, of course, um, exercise. Stay with us.